Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hoping to see Mrs. Kaspersky's uh, presentation as well. I've, I follow Kaspersky and, and, uh, and the director. By the way, he gave a very good presentation to the Australian Press Club in 2013 about cyber threats, which I'll refer to in my presentation later. Uh, very impressed with this library. Uh, Latvia is really making a statement about its uh, commitment to education. Wow, for Latvia, for this beautiful facility. Wonderful, and I'm, and I'm really honored to, to speak here. This presentation was originally planned a little bit further down the list, uh, but now I've been bumped up, so it's the same presentation, basically. I'm going to talk about a few things that, uh, let's see, I've, this is my ninth presentation at the seventh IT conference uh, since September. And uh, it's usually news uh, for people uh, in IT, uh, some of the things I'm going to say. So I'm going to be a little challenging, a little bit provocative to some of your assumptions. Security policy challenges in a post-Duxnet world. Okay, after World War II, Hiroshima, how many of you have heard of Hiroshima? Changed the way the world looked at conflict. And how many of you have heard of the word Stuxnet before this morning? Okay, much, well, yeah, not bad. Uh, this has changed cyberspace uh, policy. Uh, and, and some people don't even realize how much it has changed. Let's see, which one is this? Okay, is it working, no? Left or right or... You know, it's always like that. You press all the I buttons until to? something starts to happen. Uh, which, which is this? It's a, you know, a compatibility issue. <laughs> this is the ninth remote control that I've been... Yeah, you're so right. Or should I do my own manual changes? Okay, I, okay. I think if it doesn't come alive, then... Ah, now it's working. Please, okay. so up and down. Okay, it's flashing though. <laughs> okay. Uh, there was an article in Forbes magazine. Oh, one thing I forgot. I only have 30 minutes, so I made a timer. And this, excuse me, I want to make sure that I'm on the target. Don't worry, I can remind you. Don't waste you your remind time. me? Because yeah. I have the beeper. <laughs> Those people that know me, uh, once I get going on these things... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Forbes magazine published an article about one of the biggest cyber attacks in history. It was a, a demonstration in Hong Kong was going on at the time, democracy-type demonstration, and big cyber attack, you know, like 300 gigabytes per second uh, denial of service on websites in, in, in the Hong Kong government. And wow, wow, this is what we hear, the biggest cyber attack, uh, cyber bunker a couple years back, Olaf Kampfwist, 300 gigabytes, biggest cyber attack in history. Something serious has happened, right? Really? What's wrong with this picture? This is a picture from the demonstration while the largest cyber attack in history has been going on. Anybody idea? What's wrong? How many of you are into defense strategy policy making? Yes? They have nothing to do with Uganda. Uganda. And so the point is that it's a, it's a riot and that has nothing to do with cyber attacks. Uh, well, a little bit. To save time, know what's wrong? The lights are on. Imagine, this is Hong Kong. It's a hot climate. Imagine if there were no lights. Would there be a riot? People will be traveling by the millions, trying to find their way home. Uh, subways don't work. When they go home to their apartment, if they can find it, if the elevators work, which they don't if there's no electricity, they go up 20 flights of stairs, the food is spoiled. The refrigerator is, is down. Now, if there was a cyber attack on the electric grid of Hong Kong, that would really be something to talk about. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. I'm not going to talk about denial of service where a couple of people wait for a website to open for a couple of minutes, botnet. I'm talking about things that can hurt people. Caused by nature or caused by cyber? Results are the same. Okay. This... So how many of you have been watching this on YouTube? It's the, called the Aurora. It's not the one with Google in China. It's called 
the Aurora vulnerability demonstrated by Idaho National Labs. This is a 400 kilowatt diesel generator. Someone was sitting with a notebook 11 kilometers away and destroyed this through cyberspace, changed the phases of this device and ruined it. When you ruin something, that's it. There's no spare parts. You can't go to the store and buy a new 400 kilowatt generator. You wait six months for the manufacturer to make a new one for you. Aurora vulnerability, it's in every rotating electric device, the same vulnerability all over the world. Costs 100 euros to fix. Nobody has spent that much because you have to spend on all the generators in the world. It's too much money. Aurora, they're still talking about it. What happened here? DC Metro train. A moving train ran into a standing train, standing still. It couldn't have happened. There are control systems, sensors, networks at the control room. They see what's happening on the tracks. Unfortunately, one sensor that was designed to build for, build for 40 years did not say there was a train coming on the track, and it said everything is clear. They let the train through, seven people were killed. They did an investigation. Why did this sensor fail? Nobody knows. Was it an uh, accident or was it intentional? Nobody knows, because in critical infrastructure, you don't have much capability for forensic investigation. Was anybody intruding on the network? They don't do this. What's this? This is what happens when 200,000 gallons of gasoline falls, uh, uh, is emptied into a river from a pipeline. An IT guy working on this system decided to do some data development work on the supervisory control and data acquisition system that runs these pipelines, like hundreds of miles long pipeline of gasoline. There was an emergency uh, problem in the pipeline, but the data development work interfered with the SCADA system, and the operator couldn't get the information he needed. He pressed the wrong buttons and resulted in this kind of event. Somebody threw a cigarette into the river, and this is the, uh, what happened. And the water treatment plant next by, that was also down. So the whole community was dealing with this, and they had no water because an IT guy wanted to do data development work on a critical process. What's this? Fukushima. Uh, earthquake, uh, tsunami, power station, natural event. How many of you have heard uh, of uh, the German uh, federal... I oh, one guy is informed. While we were watching the cyber attack on Sony Pictures uh, happening, it was the biggest event in the world at that time. Uh, vice President's emails were being exposed, but they were writing about Hollywood starlets. Uh, the German federal IT department issued a report for 2014, and they publicly announced that there was a cyber intrusion at a steel mill. They entered the administration part of the plant where the IT guys know really well to protect the servers and the lands. But they knew what they were doing. They knew about steel mill operations. They went to the production floor and they caused breakdowns, took away the control and the view of what was happening in the smelter from the operators and they couldn't shut it down. Resulted in massive damage. Wow. But uh, everybody was paying attention to Sony Pictures. Nobody heard about this. You can find this on the internet. Or send me an email, I'll send you the, the report, in English or in German. Borrowed a slide from Professor Unwin here, I think. <laughs> like your presentation very much, by the way. Uh, we don't know what's going on below the surface. Uh, I mentioned Stuxnet. We first heard about it in the IT world in 2010 through an antivirus company in Belarus. People who have analyzed the code, they say it's been around since 2006. It just showed up above the iceberg. It's been down here all these years. Bash, okay, it's an interface uh, to uh, work with servers, shell. We first heard about it in 2014. But the programming mistake in the code was done in 1992. 
Anybody, a bad guy, knew about this, could have taken advantage of this for 20 years, 30 years. Another thing that happened in December of 2014, while we were all watching what was happening to that movie in Sony Pictures, Sandworm was discovered. What's it doing? It's looking all over the world for places that have Siemens and General Electric control systems. It's been around for about four or five years. So we don't know what's happening today, what's here. Maybe tomorrow we'll find out something, what's going on. We don't know what's going on. The dark net, as the professor mentioned. What do we need to protect and from what? I've worked on two or three strategy documents. Uh, first military defense strategy of Lithuania, first cybersecurity strategy of the De uh, Ministry of Defense. Uh, and the question is, what do we need to protect and from what? And also the cybersecurity law that was passed in December of last year. Big question, what do we need to protect? Big arguments. And from what? Very critical. If you're going to save your society, make it more secure. Here's our digital fortress that we're talking about, the cyber fortress, the IT people working in their servers. But all the people, the poor people that Professor talked about, the common people live out here, and there's nobody to protect them. This is the critical infrastructure, power grids, pipeline control system, air traffic control system, train systems. There's no night out there, St. George, uh, to try to defeat this threat. This is what we're talking about. What is under threat? What does it mean when we talk about critical infrastructure? A news portal that gets DDoSed for a week and makes a big hue and cry that, look, we're under cyber attack? Does this have anything to do with the functions and processes vital to economies and well-being of citizens? You know, a hospital, operating room, without power, all of a sudden. A big section of a country going dark. This is what happened in Turkey, by the way. In March of this year, over half of the regions of Turkey were without power, no mobile phones, no trains, no gas pumps working, no money from the AT machines. Okay, this is what we're talking about. And a couple weeks before, it happened in Amsterdam, around Schiphol Airport. The disruptions that can put national security, economy, and people's lives at, work, at risk. Your life stops. Okay, the power goes out of this building, you're going to have a hard time finding your way out of here. Okay? And thank God it's daytime. What is under threat? We're talking about loss of information, classified documents, databases, corrupted. What we're really talking about, and if you're talking about critical infrastructure, Pipelines, transportation systems, is losing the view and control of a critical processes. You're in a control room, and you're watching how a generator is running or how the trains are running. You, all of a sudden, you can't see. This is the Fukushima reactor control room. A power station designed to produce electric power. Four reactors to produce electric power. It has no power. Here, flashlights. All the safety systems don't work because there's no power to run them. That's really big news, and they can't see. They lost the view. They have to send people into a radioactive area. Later, they took robots, and they don't have control of the process. There's a meltdown going on. They can't do anything about it. They can't see, and they can't control it. That's what we're talking about. This is the, uh, uh, the six-kilometer-long Carmel Tunnel in Israel in uh, a, a fall of last year, or the year before, I can't remember now. All of a sudden, operators six kilometers long, imagine, leading to Haifa, seaport. All of a sudden, video camera system goes black. All of a sudden, air conditioning, ventilation system goes back, goes, goes blank. All of a sudden, fire control goes back. In a tunnel, you need to see what's going on, video. You need to be able to react quickly to fires, and you need to make sure that people don't die from gas asphyxiation. All systems were down. What's going on? They closed this tunnel, big tunnel, with lots of lanes of highways for two days. Did they call the national CERT, CERT-LV, or, or CERT-LT, the equivalent in Israel? No, 
because the national certs only know Windows, Cisco, and Linux. They don't know video camera systems. They don't know fire control systems, the control system, ABB, Schneider Electric, not Microsoft, not Simon Tech. They luckily had a company called Cyber Gym that just does this kind of work, experiments with control systems. They came, and it was they, not the national cert, that determined that they were under cyber attack. True story. Impact of IT on the industrial control system environments. Big things have happened. IT world is not even aware. In 1971, in the 70s, you had lots of employees pressing buttons. They're controlling a process. The rate where the smelter is, the boiler is, the generator is. But IT came in and says, you can do this all by remote control. You can uh, get rid of a lot of staff. You don't need to go out people checking things. You can check it remotely. This is like what a national grid looks like. The control room for a country like Latvia uh, looks like. And it's one guy. But it did some great things. You can remotely monitor and control critical systems, and it made our modern world. Unfortunately, it int introduced new possibilities for danger. Nobody thought when they were de uh, designing these wonderful systems to save money and make things more efficient that somebody was going to attack them. Nobody, why would you want to attack a power plant? And it, it in introduced a, pro a problem of uh, applying IT security practices on unknown control system environments. Joe Weiss. Look him up. He's a very good person to, to uh, exchange emails with. He's an opinion leader in industrial control system, nuclear engineer by, by profession. This is a quote that I like from him. The IT community views control systems as just another computer. They don't see all of the devices in the field that sense, measure, control, and monitor physical processes. These devices don't look like a computer, and they don't use Windows. They use either proprietary real-time operating systems or fully embedded. There is no security at this level. OK, call your national cert. Fix this. You know what they'll say? What, what is that? And I, I saw a documentary on Stuxnet. Uh, they talked about Simon Tech, one of the first companies to analyze the code. And they said, boy, this is really bad. This is something else. Uh, uh, Windows zero days, but there's this other part. Uh, program logic controllers. First thing we did, we need to go look up what a program logic controller was. Uh, new for IT people making antivirus software for, for Windows type, 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 type products. This is stuff that's being connected to networks. And there's some, been some examples publicly known. Usually in the nuclear industry, everything is publicly available if you have an incident. Uh, Nuclear power plant in the United States, Hatch Nuclear Power. A guy like me gets a job as an IT guy working for 25 years in IT security and defense policy. I'm going to work for your power plant. I'm going to improve your IT security. And look, there is a computer that needs a Windows update. It, how dare you? How could you have this? This is a security breach. This is a vulnerability. I'm going to go in and perform the update. He did that. But he didn't understand what that computer was connected to, the control systems, the pumping systems uh, for a nuclear reactor. The safety systems interpreted that update as an adverse event, and it was an automatic scram, uh, shutdown of the reactor. What does scram mean? Don't pass go, don't collect $200, shut down the reactor at once. Just trying to be a good IT security guy, implement IT security policy on a Windows computer. Shut down the reactor for two days. How much money did that cost to buy the power? Same thing happened here at another power station. Bad Ethernet card connected to the network that has ABB, Schneider Electric, remote terminal users, uh, program logic controllers. It caused a, a, cause a broadcast sta a scan. Uh, it was a bad Ethernet card. And safety system said, scram, shut down the, the reactor. These vulnerabilities are accidents you know, that are being exposed, but a bad guy can use them for intentional attacks. And who, who might be using them? I'll talk about that. 
Uh, this is a, a slide I made impromptu for a different conference on privacy uh, that I was at uh, last week. And I said, I tried to illustrate what's happened to cyberspace. When I started my career, it was called the Information Highway. In the United States, there was the President Clinton Al Gore presidential campaign. One of their promises was, we're going to do something about the internet. Al Gore, by the way, you might think of as a climate change person, won the Nobel Prize. He's also one of the fathers of the internet. He put money through Congress and programs to fund the infrastructure needed to make the internet that we have come today. But this is what it looked like, the promise of the information highway the world is going to get together, we're going to, we're going to uh, you know, brotherhood and information, we're going to do wonderful things. But what happened since then? Cybercrime. All right. Nobody expected it, but wow. Uh, you're driving along the information highway and all of a sudden you're stopped, there's a roadblock. Anonymous, social hacktivists are blocking the highway, DDoSing, slowing things down, attacking a company, target, uh, getting a little targeted. Cybercrime, they don't care who they target. And then, you know, we have the Snowden searching us, uh, thinking, uh, looking for suspects, uh, bad people. Uh, that's something to deal with. And now what do we have? Governments coming down the information highway with their tanks and just pushing everybody, all of us civilians with our families driving, benefiting from the information society, pushing us off the road. They don't have any rules. Nobody cares. I do what I want. I'm a state. That's what we're dealing with. And then in, the, in, the, in a few weeks, I'm going to add another picture. It's going to be terrorists. They're going to start thinking, gee, I don't need to blow myself up. I can use this and get the same result. A cyber physical attack is a new term coming out. Who is this guy? Well, I guess the younger people don't know this guy too much, uh, but I remember Sean Connery coming out as the first James Bond 007 in the 1960s. So this is a big thing for my generation. Oh, I recognize this guy. Okay, what does he have a license to do from his government? License to kill. Okay, if he needs technical help, who does he ask for technical help? Some kind of gadget. Q. Q. Okay. And has James Bond, if you watch any James Bond movie, did he ever fail in achieving his mission? No. If James Bond failed, there would be no more James Bond movies. James Bond is an advanced persistent threat, high tech. He gets the order. He can do what he wants. He will get you. If he gets the order to get you, he will get you. Doesn't matter if you have unhackable equipment. That's just another problem to solve. Oh, they don't use Wi-Fi? Okay, we'll do it this way. Oh, they don't use Bluetooth? Okay, we'll do it this way. He's going to get you. If you get targeted, they're going to get you. If it's government because they have the resources, the time, and perhaps motive to do something. Some comment? Yeah, and okay, I'll try not to. I'll try not to. Thank you. I'll try to lower my scariness. Uh, okay. Malicious ac activities of states. What's been going on? Well, we saw something, the Georgian-Russian war uh, in 2008. Uh, we had a coordinated military operation with the tanks and the planes. And uh, at the same time, cyber. And, there, you know, it's hard to make the connection, the attribution, but it was an interesting thing. There's been several studies of this, but things like uh, uh, all the preparation that was done. The cyber people knew exactly what to do when the time said do it, they did it. But you can't do it just right now, I'm going to attack Georgia. You do reconnaissance, you do research. I mean, they did research like uh, uh, when they were out, out of power in Georgia because of the military operation, there was a big demand to get uh, diesel generators. All those generator websites were blocked with DDoS. I mean, it was a nicely planned. That's the war of the future. There'll be tanks and planes and bombs, but at the same time, will be a cyber element to deal with. Iranian nuclear and oil facilities from 2009. I'll talk about one attack, oil facility took place, oil platform uh, later. One day Saudi Aramco, biggest oil company in the world, came to work and 30,000 computers, all the hard drives, everything erased. 
backup servers, the whole thing. Belgian Telecom supplies telecommunications services to NATO and European Union headquarters in Brussels, part of the uh, submarine cable network. They were intruded like you don't believe. They had the administrative rights to go into it. Okay, they did some research. Who are the suspects? Russia, China? No. Apparently, allies of Belgium were doing this. U.S. financial institutions, maybe retribution for what was happening to Iran, who knows? Snowden and the uh, energy sector uh, events happening, the uh, sandworm, black energy, and so forth. All smell of work of this guy with state resources behind him. One case of Stuxnet. Stuxnet came out in the US. It was a science program, PBS. They spent time on this. It's a big deal. It's still 2010. They're still talking about it. Why are they talking about it? Why? Because the first cyber weapon used by one state against the critical infrastructure of another. It destroyed physical critical infrastructure through loss of view and loss of control. Forget about the Windows Zero days. Look at the industrial control system side of Stuxnet, the second warhead. It fed in false data to the operators that everything was fine. Everything's turning, centrifuges are normal, everything's fine. And they were not. They were malfunctioning, but Stuxnet was sending them like a videotape, security camera, you're sending them, everything is clear. It was high-tech, cheap, and effective and deniable. Cost about $10 million, 50 meters underground facility, disconnected from the internet. We're safe, we're not connected to the internet. Well, not really. Yeah, not if you have a, a USB. Okay, not cool. And they thought, you know, people said, well, maybe it's not so bad that Iran's program, that nuclear, you know, it's better for the world that they were slowed down, that they, you know, they, they, they couldn't do this. But few people talk about the targets are in U.S. and Europe, not in Middle East for these kind of operations. Still not convinced of the, of the danger. How many of you have heard of Project Shine? Okay, two industrial control system people who decided to use a Shodan search engine to see are there critical infrastructure connected. They found two million in 211 countries Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, they found 2,000 uh, open windows into critical infrastructure. Uh, this guy is a hacker. He used Shodan and he said, look, I found a 400 kilowatt generator. So regular hackers can do. Think what a government can do. The, the challenge, defense understands and is scared to death Offense sees an opportunity, but does not understand the implications and politicians don't create. Got that from Eugene Kaspersky's. And you know, I've been to a lot of IT conferences, and these things aren't talked about. But I went to one conference where there were militaries from 17 countries in Europe and North America, and they are talking about it. They are talking about defense, and they're also talking about an opportunity. This is a military domain. Okay, the information highway that we grew up with is not what it used to be. Okay, great movie, 1951. Uh, Michael Rennie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, not the one with Keenan Reeves. Don't watch that. This is a good movie. Whenever Gort the robot saw something threatening, he responded. And it was like world destruction. We're at a moment in cyberspace like August 1914 when World War I started. Very close to something. Proposals for cyber peace. And it's my last slide. Okay? Anybody want to know about cyber peace? We have time to talk about cyber peace among states? No? Okay. Give a minute. One, refrain from malicious cyber activities directed against critical civilian infrastructure. In peacetime, you know, wartime is war, but in peacetime, stay out of each other's financial systems. If you attack Wall Street, you're going to attack yourself in the wallet. Uh, stay out of energy sector. Okay, they're all connected. Pipelines, electric grids. Don't play games. 
And plus, we all use the same equipment. If you attack one piece of equipment, who knows, it may affect us too. Responsibility. Don't say, this is not my jurisdiction. I don't know my citizens. I can't control them. Take the responsibility. You may be held liable. Monitoring and reporting of execution one and two. Idealistic? No. Where countries really agree that something is really serious to do something about it, they do something. In chemical warfare, yes. 1997 convention prohibiting use of chemical weapons. 99% of the world's population, the countries, have signed this. And it's enforced by an organization, the, uh, the, the uh, Organization for the Prohibition of Conventional Weapons. So, and they won the Nobel Peace Prize a couple of years back for their help in Syria at that time. So, it is possible to try to lower the, uh, the, the level of tension, the uh, mistrust among states. Why are you creating a cyber command? Maybe I should do that too. Uh, you know, mistrust. There's time to do something. You can read the article based on my presentation to find out more about it. There's, I'm on the net. And thank you very much. Are there any questions? A nice applause. Yeah, okay. Who goes first with the questions? We have to only time for two. Yeah. Could you give him a microphone? I, I can't hear. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry. You have to, you have well, to get and up and come to this, and my to timer this microphone. Just went off. Okay, 29 yeah, hurry minutes. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Thank you. I want to hear him because okay. he has some very good questions. So, what are the officials doing about this? Because this is a system building problem. And what kind of legislation have you planned anything? Or what are? Think about for buildings, we have building code. You're not allowed to build a system just like any, just like any way. So, what are the officials doing about it? Okay. I think Eugene Kaspersky, I, I quote him, I love this quote. Uh, this is, I think, what the government's officials are doing, okay? Defense understands and they're scared to death. How are we going to depend, defend against these threats? Offense sees a wonderful possibility here. Wow, this is cool. Look what they did with Stuxnet. Nobody got sent to trial for that. They did it. This is cool, but they don't understand the implications of doing something like that. They can kill people. Okay? And the last group, the politicians don't care. You know, I've been working in government, IT, uh, security, and defense policy. The more I read this statement, the more it rings true to me. Uh, it resonates with, with my experience. You know, what, what is a process? What is a control system? Uh, no, we can't do this in an exercise. Uh, this system is not connected to the Internet. Believe me, if you hear somebody saying, we're safe, we're not connected to the internet, they don't know what they're talking about, okay? This device here, you think this is a watch? It's a secondary function. It's connected to GPS. It measures my heart rate when I go jogging, and it's connected to maps. It's connected to the internet. I have a little, uh, what? Okay. This is uh, one of those strange USB devices for, for Apple. This is not connected to the Internet. Now it is. Okay, Andy Warhol, big artist in the United States in the 50s, once made a prediction that everybody in the world, everybody in the world will be famous for 15 minutes. You hear it from me for the first time. I think that prediction is everything in the world, we're talking about Internet of Things and industrial Internet of Things, everything in the world will be connected for 15 minutes at one time or another to the Internet. Okay, this is just connected uh, for two minutes. Okay, now it's not connected. Okay, I can go now and connect here. It'll connect to the Internet again. Everything is connected to the Internet. When I came, went to the hotel here across the street, they knew that I was there 10 years ago, in April of 2005, for a, a DT Media conference. Don't tell me there is nothing connected to the Internet. It's one of the biggest cyber myths. And I'm going to write an article about this, uh, the 10 cyber myths. Thank you very much for your excellent question. I wish I had a prize to give you, sir. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Uh, any more questions? Right, there is one. Okay, please uh, uh, come up in front. Here's the microphone. Hi. You mentioned uh, that the critical infrastructure, uh, the SCADA systems, the industrial control systems, are so much critical. And uh, you cannot just go and update the server. You cannot install updates there. And uh, on the other side, the impact of those systems is, is so much critical that you need to actually keep those systems secure. Yeah. I believe there's a conflict here, and the conflict is, uh, is programmed into, into, this, uh, into this dilemma. Because, uh, for example, if, if you have those systems, if you have those SCADA systems running electrical grid, grid control and so on, everybody is buzzing that those systems are so much critical, you can't touch those, you can't update those, you can't do anything those, yeah. you can't even breathe near It's those. very frustrating if you're an IT guy going to work over there. Yeah, uh, I actually am. Uh-huh, <laughs> okay, my so you know. Okay. But yeah, but from the other side, from the other side, you cannot update those, you cannot touch those systems, but these systems are actually the, the biggest value of your company. Not those portals, not those uh, websites, yeah, 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 but yeah. those systems. And uh, the only thing, as an IT guy, you are left with, with is that you build a fence as high as you can and as fat as you can around that stuff, and you just pray that these systems are safe behind that, the, that, that fence. And uh, by yourself, you actually do understand that they are not. Okay. And uh, I can bring you a sample that, for example, in our company, we have a tier three plus data center with electromagnetic de defense and everything you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we host websites there, we host uh, CR CRM there, and we have systems controlling gas concentration in, in oxygen, in mines. Are you an engineer, by the way? Yeah. Excuse Are you an engineer by, by, by I'm training? A, I'm an IT guy, sorry. <laughs> okay, Chris, you talk like an engineer. How many engineers are in the audience with an engineer in electricity and in... Uh, okay. We need more engineers in this discussion group. How many are, uh, think themselves as IT people? Raise your hand. Okay. You need to do what I did. Go visit your electric company and talk to their engineers. And they'll illustrate what you're saying. They'll tell you why we can't shut down our system because we have to shut down the whole plant. Our systems are real time. If, if, if you do something to the timing, a millisecond, you cause a security incident. Okay. Don't tell me I need to have a 12-letter character password. I want one, two, three, four. And I know why as an engineer, because if I have an emergency, I can't look to see who changed the password to blah, 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 12 lines. We might have an explosion. And that's why not only I know the password, one, two, three, four, but my 12 other colleagues have the same password. But you know, it's impossible, sir, to conduct an investigation because we don't know who is at the, at the control station with, if you all have the same password. Sorry, we have to have a reliable system. If we don't have it, we have no power, no water. That's what I call a denial of service attack. Not to DDoS on a website. It's no electricity denial of service, no water, no gas in the, in the, in the uh, furnace, in, in the radiator in wintertime. Okay. Okay. Uh, additionally, you, are, you mentioned that those systems do, mostly don't run Windows, and uh, I'd say that those systems mostly do run Windows, and it's not only yeah. Windows, <laughs> Windows 7 or Windows yeah. 8. Yeah. Not even Windows Server, it's like Windows NT4. Yeah, and yeah. you don't, don't, don't have to, to actually execute any Well, I've in seen a Windows 2000 SCADA workstation in charge of a major capital of Europe. And I say, oh, why are you using Windows 2000? They say, it works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing happens. I go, but do you know that Microsoft no longer supports it? I mean, there's all these security vulnerabilities. Oh, yeah, to make it run with our 30-year-old equipment, we had to remove those security. <laughs> okay? That's what we're talking about. They think it's okay. And many people in government say private industry, critical infrastructure, they should decide for themselves what is secure. Okay, sounds very democratic. But if they think Windows 2000 is okay, shouldn't they hear something from the government saying, you know, it's not okay, and this is why. Come to our presentation lecture. We'll send Mr. Butermas out to you. No, 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 we heard about him. Don't send him. He'll give us too many problems to think about. 
Vitos, uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm tied to the timing. It's a very interesting subject. Okay. Yeah, some national souvenir.